possibility for less. Oh, they we'll lose it here, then guaranteed four. Yeah, and also if C9 loses here, they're guaranteed an eighth place finish in the regular season. These guys would love to lock in their LCS spot and maybe make the Miracle Gauntlet run. Team Silomid can improve playoff seeding here. They, I believe, cannot possibly get a tie for first anymore since CLG won earlier. They can't be part of that whole game. Now, pretty standard bands coming through. Balls, his favorite Maokai, his favorite Rumble, the Callista away from Sneaky. And pretty standard yeah. bands up against Team Silomid. Very well. generalist bands here from Cloud9 on the red side, not targeting anybody, spreading them out across strong champions on the current patch. Pretty much top performers in top, mid, and jungle. Yeah. Uh, that leaves out AD carry, so Team Solo Mid gonna get that silver for Turtle. And the speed boost is, has been crucial to so many teams this split, and this entire year, actually. And it still allows Wild Turtle to play utility for Bjergsen to get that Kog'Maw in and out of fights, make sure he's not caught out here, as well as denying the engage from C9. So still a flexible, Set of choices here for TSM. Cloud9 can try to pick away some junglers, although Gragas and Rek'Sai both being up makes that not the strongest idea. A lot of supports open right now, Alistair being one of the big ones, Shen top also. I would say two of the most likely picks here, at least in perceived value. But true to C9 status, they never hover champions, they wait to the last possible second, click them at the same time, and no, actually, Tristana and Karma coming through, so a very aggressive dual lane. Sneaky Elimination want to win this. Yeah, they've been really uh, heavy on the Karma and Tristana hype trains. Lemonation, one of the only supports to really embrace the Karma after her rework. Yeah. Uh, but he has found some success on her. And the Tristana, as you know, <laughs> very good at taking turrets early, so maybe Cloud9 will return to the Cloud9 of old. Try and get an early turret lead for Global Gold. Yeah, and then levy that into some objective trading towards the mid game. And a big diving frontline tank from the jungle they so have, that they can start fights. They have had the most success when they get these early leads, and they've taken that early gold and been able to turn it into the quickest games that we've seen all split from any North American teams. That's very true. There's your Shen for the cross map play. Yet to be seen if it will be top or support. Yeah, good of Solomid to leave that for a little bit later to see if they can find a lane match if they would like here. Solomid waiting for Cloud9 to reveal one of their solo lanes here. They'll have to do it here. Unless they pick one of them as a flex pick that could go into the jungle, they've got to reveal something. I'm very curious what Balls is going to play because by far and away, Rumble and Maokai are his top two champions. He has put the majority yeah. of his games all season long on them. And now they've both been banned out by TSM. Very curious what else he's got practice on and if he can fulfill a different role. Yeah, I know Balls used to be one of the big carry forces. His Rise and Rumble were two of his very best. He's been going to tanks and he's going to find a bit of a mix between the two. Plus the Shivana once again for high here. He won with it last time around. It was a great win over enemy. And now he's going to find it against TSM. All right, yeah. So Sylvana's biggest strength is clearing through the jungle extremely quickly. Last time he went sated, I expect him to do the same this game around. Mm -hmm. And Balls will once again tank up the tanking duties. Let's see who his opponent will be. Will it be the Shen, or is it going to... Looks like it will be. As the other supports are being moused over poor Lustboy here. Now, they definitely do need Bjergsen to be on a big damage source, because they've got yeah. very low damage to two tanks locked in, as well as Sivir, so... Victor would fill that role. Yeah, it'd be a very strong mid-range team fight team. And a bunch of engage comes through, so the Sivir is not for the kite back. It's there to get the team in. Lust Boys Annie gonna come through here with the Victor. So TSM going in. And a top lane Shen to hold the top side. And there we go. Yep. Cloud9 running the exact same comp they've run or similar. Bunch of shields, Oriana Karma, tanky frontline, backline damage. Yep. Alright, well. We'll see how well Hai can affect the early game here on Shivana because she does have a difficulty. Yes, she's probably got the best clear in the entire game, but her ganks are uh, leave a little bit to be desired. <laughs> he yeah. is taking exhaust, so he's got some form of CC. The speed boost that Shivana gets from her burnout is actually really underrated. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, especially in the longer lanes, side lanes, she can actually pull off effective ganks yeah. early. Yeah, Fights you for 10 seconds flat with the move speed buff. She's definitely on. not a non-factor in the early game. It's just not going to bring that hard CC. We'll see if we can yeah. make use of that exhaust early. Well, thankfully, he's got a speed boost from Karma as well as a shockwave from Orianna. So definitely there are some tools here to make this all happen. Guys, you're getting into our third game of the day. TSM looking to go into a tie for third. C9 need to win this to lock in their LCS spot and maybe keep that dream of Worlds alive. It's going to be a very interesting game. Hai still the only guy to play Shivana here in the North American LCS. His second time on it. Devour is going to be fun. But guys at home, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know who you think is going to come out on top with this game. Tweet at Level Esports. Send your vote with either hashtag TSM win or hashtag C9 win. We'll count that up throughout the game and let you know what you guys are thinking because we're just that kind. All right, well, both Bjergsen and Incarnation in the mid lane going to be running cleanse. So the uh, mid lane ganks, they are going to have a little bit of extra protection, even if Les Boy does get up to some early roams on Annie. From cloud Nine side, though, I don't know. Uki's looking to cleanse. I guess the Gnar ultimate. And that is about it. You can remove exhaust. I mean, yeah, you can take off the slow. So that's decent. But yeah, much more uses for incarnation. Yeah. Well, Cloud9 are guaranteed to play at least one more game this year. If they win, it's a tiebreaker. If they lose, it's a relegation match. TSM know they're headed to playoffs without a bye. Better seeds are always nice, though. Third place again, the highest TSM could finish. And it's definitely a possibility for them. Yeah, as far as trying new things for TSM, though, and, you know, and talking about feeling secure in their playoff position, not much, really not anything new shown here. Dyrus has even played Shen top before, so TSM have used all of these champions before. See if they alter their play style at all and maybe go for some early game plays instead of playing safe and calculated for the longer period. Yes, we do have the deep uh, lane swap wards laid down. And Turtle and Lustboy are actually waiting in the mid lane for any bit of information before they move up. Heading up towards the top side for lane swap already, and the pink goes down. Ah, they see the duo from Cloud9 head top and immediately switch gears. So Wild Turtle and Lustboy trying to avoid that two versus two. And uh, Turtle going to head down bottom. Interesting. All right. I wouldn't have thought that was going to be too bad of a matchup for the Sivir Annie lane. But C9 going to jump right on in and realize, hey, Santorin and Dyrus get a little greedy in the start. Oh, Lemon could not steal the small piece of the blue buff. So full XP and gold go over. Dyrus, Santorin getting half a level. Good amount of damage, though. Karma is one yeah. of the most annoying level one invades from a support role. He got off the multiple Qs there. One empowered. Uh, High Ball is going to have a much easier time. Ball is going to tank up most of the camps because he's going to go back to base. And High will have a very easy road on Shivana. Yep. Now with a lane swap, actually, I kind of do like Shivana in the lane swap because she can har farm so quickly. Ooh, Lust Boy going to go answer, though. Yeah, she might face off with Lust Boy. Has red buff. That's a trinket ward to try to spot out what's going on here. All right, so a long order shade of level one. Had to even time his first trinket use around that. Lust Boy sees what's going on here, though. Really difficult to uh, fully interrupt this, but they get the full reset there, and blue buff regenerates. So Lust Boy delays a very slight amount on the triple uh, jungle here as the rest of TSM head over. Well, Smite forced on a blue buff. Interesting how they have not sent anyone top here for TSM. So TSM are setting up for a four versus three tower dive. That's really dangerous. But they've been able to cut off balls who oh, fall in. Oh, he's got a top barely flashed is... onto it. Oh no, first blood for Santorin and Lemon and High have nowhere to go here. Will the dive continue? That was a really, really poor flash there. Teleport comes back in for balls once he Revives, but first blood, the damage has been done. TSM grabbed the first blood. Yes, Cloud9 have had Sneaky up top the entire time, though, so Sneaky's been getting that solo experience on Tristana. Yeah. 
Makes it only a 500 gold game despite the 600 gold worth of first blood. So, you know, a minor saving grace here for C9 as their AD carry is getting some experience. But as long as Dyrus can walk into a lane sometime soon, and he does so in the top side. At that point, oh, it's so dangerous. It's so it's so dangerous to try and rush in for the three-man tower defense there. If one member gets cut off behind right there, you either pull out and you give up the two that are already stuck under turret, or you flash in there and give up the first blood without any wow. damage going over to TSM. Really smart play by Dyrus. The lane is frozen, meaning he's got way more minions than Sneaky, so he just picks a fight outside of turret range, and Sneaky loses the trade. Really, really, really intelligent play by Dyrus. Yep, he's a min uh, minion aggro. That's always the trade-off. And Dyrus going to try and get it to reset here. And to the he's facing a Shivana. It's not like he's in danger here. Most other junglers, uh, like, if it was Rek'Sai for high? I, I would definitely say that he still is in danger okay, of okay. Shivana. A Shivana gank up in the top lane right there. Uh, you know, with the speed boost of Burnout and with the exhaust, they could definitely get his flash. Okay. Um, because Tristana has a slow of her own, and Sneaky could jump on him. So Tristana actually is fairly good at setting up ganks. There are multiple slows in a long lane. Can be deceptively dangerous. As long as they don't stack them. True. Can't, can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. You want to use, uh, maximize the duration of your slows. Spread them out. And High has that same issue, of course, himself. He'll have red buff half the time, and he went chilling smite. So we'll see if High does it right. Got a jungling red about the time that patch went out, so hasn't had too many bad instincts to cover up. First recalls come through for the mid laners. Chalice for Incarnation. Bjergsen upgrading his Death Ray and getting a set of boots here. I'm surprised that like a metallic man has like use for leather boots. Like wouldn't you just make the robot legs good in the first place? Well, <laughs> it depends on if the boots are water resistant, I guess. Ah, yeah. Then you can get a bonus out of it. Look how, look how long ago the first matchup of this these two squads was, though. Cloud9 versus TSM was all the way back in week one. That was the first game of the split. And it was so close. It, all, it just feels like a completely different time in the North American LCS. Yeah. Well, technically it was a different time. It was. Time. It was uh, <laughs> April or something. But, but they were coming from such different positions. Both of them still coming from top positions in the North American LCS. Uh, Santor not going to stick around for to kill that ward. Pink ward's very good bait. High in position. And Shivana with full health and exhaust. Very Very dangerous high. to tango with. Yeah. He heads back up into the jungle, though, and TSM have those deep wards, so they've been alerted. They've got that really sneaky pink ward behind the red buff bush. Yeah. And High... Ooh, nice. Good steal by Dyrus. Yeah, and High hasn't smited his uh, Raptors in a while, so he didn't uh, get yeah. the notification that a ward saw him. So they've got the the ward behind the raptor bush that would proc it immediately. So you won't get that notification that uh, the pink one is there, but okay. or it won't know that right. it's different from the original proc. Good point. But uh, more sneaky things. Good deep wards there from TSM after the lane uh, swap there. Seems. I'm gonna go try and help out balls under the turret. It looks like. C9's back ahead in gold despite the first blood here. And it's not even like there's any one lane winning by that much. It's like small leads here and there, plus six in a various set of lanes. But the first blood kind of nullified here. Sneaky and Dyrus in a bit of a battle. The shield stops the turret damage. And the bot lane turret's about to go down here. Really nice pressure by the dual lane. Dyrus unable to hold it. Nicely picked up and conversing on the top side. That one's still at half. C9 is getting a better lane assignment. And, and TSM wanted the swap. Yeah, TSM do have three members top cornering Dyrus right now, and it looks like he's going to peace out currently. So TSM should be able to get a decent amount of damage, if not answer immediately for the turret. Uh, bottom lane continues to push for Cloud9, though, as they start to make some headway on the secondary turret. Yeah. Denies Dyrus fairly heavily. It's a 12 minion difference between these top laners. That should set up balls for a decent situation. Dyrus getting chucked lower and lower. The root's gonna land. He has to flash to get away. Oh man. Dyrus that, running out of resources. Yeah. The extra experience that Sneaky got from the solo lane time at the very beginning of the game. He's still a higher level than Dyrus on that Tristana and very threatening with his early back of the pickaxe. 
Pai still working his way up. He wants to get the full combination of Devourer before he heads back to base. Sneaking Lemon, though, want to punish the Flashless Dyrus here. Got a ward to set it up. Oh, they're going to wait till the last second of the recall. He's going to... Oh, this is so bad for Dyrus. He does not have Flash. He can't get away from the tether. So much Saves damage coming through. Taunt. Didn't go for the rocket jump damage. But the ulti's going to knock him down. Nicely done by Sneaky. The kill on a Dyrus didn't see it coming. The patience there of Cloud9. And dropping that Trinket Ward in the middle of the lane before retreating to the brush. Smart play from the duo of Cloud9. They're able to earn themselves a kill. And even up the scoreboard there. Cloud9 now easily ahead in gold of TSM. Incarnation going blow for blow with Bjergsen, which is very yeah. good news for Cloud9. You mentioned last time these guys fought in the different ages. Incarnation was down 100 CS at like 25 minutes in that game. It was ridiculous how far behind he was. And yeah, different age, different time. Incarnation doing so much better in this lineup. C9 a bit better this side of the split. First Dragon goes to them as well. Looking pretty good with these guys. It's so nice. If you're playing a Devourer jungler and your side lane wins like that, makes a play on their own without any sort of assistance, High's got to be really, really happy with this early situation here because he's been able to freely farm up to the combination of his Devourer. Yeah. And now he can just power through the jungle. Both the side lanes here uh, easily controlled for Cloud9 as they both recall. And there's the BF sword by Fortristana. Sneaky working towards his Infinity Edge. Hasn't gone for the Averse Blade, which is a very common early buy for him. Ah, High does. Have a Raptor proc finally. Yeah. Finds the pink ward. And he's already close to 10 stacks. As you mentioned, the lane's winning, the devour being done. He got the dragon afterwards. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway from the lane swap there for Cloud9 is the gigantic lead of balls on Gnar. Uh, being able to use his range form quite easily to get some CS. That while Darius was in under a lot of pressure from Sneaky and Lemon. Oh, oh, the flash engaged. They really want this one. Shadowly popped as well. They really want this fight to work out here. C9 trying to get away, but Elimination goes down. Three assists for the kill on a wild turtle. That was almost a double there, but Sneaky barely was able to get his rocket jump off in time before the Gragas ultimate landed and knocked him further into TSM territory. Big play there from TSM, though, collapsing on the turret as Cloud9 tried to go back to normal lanes and Set up the defense here. It does mean that Balls gets to increase his lead over Dyrus with the minions, though. Dyrus is going to just use his teleport now to get back the lane. Bonus of Shen having two global teleports. Yeah. Very nicely done. Balls not denying much here. Hyper versus the Q. Dyrus regening up enough that he's going to be just fine with this trade. The Hex Drinker not yet winning for Balls. This Nar sitting on only 500 gold here, so it's not like he's going to get farther ahead after shopping. Choices for Dyrus definitely helping him out here. And the 30 CS difference still keeps the gold fairly close. A great shock with the kind of Bjergsen. He's Ty still gonna got go flash. I can't quite reach it. Ooh. Yeah. Dangerous to try and jump over Gragas. He can body slam you out of your ultimate. And Pantorin's quick about it. Hyde doesn't risk the situation. Bjergsen both had both summoners. They might try now. Chilling Smite used. Hyde doesn't want to dive yet again. A bit of patience on the no tank stats jungler here. I actually like that High isn't tunneling on just farming camps as well. It's one of the big things I think that people underestimate Devour because it, they feel like they have to farm up to get sated. It's actually a fairly efficient item. Buying it, just the stats on it, you don't have to get sated for it to be good. The problem that people run into with Devour is that attack speed is not a good stat to rush in this game. Yeah. Attack speed is much better once you already have some sort of damage. So it's just, it's not the best stat to rush for junglers. Um, very few junglers uh, actually can really make use of it early, like Kale and Shivana. So uh, I like that he's not tunneling on it. He was actually helping the team get the tower push in there, try and gain some pressure for them. Um, and now he'll just return to farm in the jungle. All right, 10 stacks when we last saw him in the lane. Let's catch. Up with his growth later on here. Blue buff, I believe, just safely went to Bjergsen, so no heavy counter jungling by high. The CS difference also not even that big between the two of them. 
Fought lane squares off incarnation versus Bjergsen. Blue buff line's gonna go for the play again. Shockwave comes in, and here comes High. Does, Does not flash. go for the dragon form over the top of it. And Bjergsen yet again able to walk away without summoners. Yeah, still holding on to his flash. Bjergsen. Oh, he's not in too much danger. Less boy and Lemonation, the support. Eh, all right, never mind. Less boy barely fights back, didn't even earn his full. Uh, he wanted to keep his stun here for the team play, it looks like. Didn't want to waste his stun on the one versus one support duo. Well, Incarnation nearly out of mana and missing an ultimate means there's not a lot of fight back. And that's a good smite for Santorin. He just gave Bjergsen his blue and took away Incarnations. This matchup might get better for the TSM side. This game is still incredibly close, a 200 gold game. Power traded pretty equally across the map while Balls holds a 50 million lead. Wild Turtle. Oh, we got it. Nice. A little bit of counter jungling for both sides. Incarnation able to grab that one. The deep wards there from Cloud9. Paid off though, inside the blue jungle. Or for TSM, excuse me. Yeah. So invades aside a fairly docile game. The mid laners are going at it. The junglers show up, but it's been great evasive action every time. Quick out of turret kills that went normally. And we're mostly waiting on this dragon to respawn here. Cloud9 did get the first one right after Devour was completed. But Bjergsen has full resources, has an ultimate. Maybe TSM stands up for the next one here. Ward control right now is actually much better for TSM. They've already set up multiple entrances to the dragon area. And Cloud9 will be late to the party here. Plus, they had Turtle already combine his Infinity Edge with the boosted Critical Strike of Azeal. Mm -hmm. So Turtle's already at a pretty good spot here. They've been funneling him into the side lanes and using the Sivir, Ricochet, and Boomerang combo to quickly push the wave so that they can then get in position for fights like this. TSM doing a very good job jockeying for this dragon. Usually they give up a lot of the early dragons, but now with uh, Sivir having such a good lead, and Victor in the mid lane. Yeah. And Bjergsen goes back to mid to start it off. Sure C9 cannot push down mid as a response here. Yeah, Balls does have teleport, and he has the full rage bar for Nar, but no vision on Dragon after no the words. scrying orb times out. Means that this one will go to TSM, and they even up the Dragon score. Well earned. C9 realized they could not fly for that one. TSM realized C9 could not. And Everyone went to the right places. Ball's still trying to push around on Dyrus. Plus 40 CS or so, but not getting a lot of headway. And he's not really hitting the turret either. He's harassing Dyrus more than he's hitting the turret. So still at half right there, even though a fair bit of attack damage is on Balls. The mid laner is just still able to clear back and forth with really no issue. Ty now to try to make the play. This is why Balls is harassing. Maybe he can knock oh, down Dyrus. This is really dangerous for Dyrus. He's got, there's this chilling smite slow. Now he can use the exhaust. Use the Doesn't want to all in. Yeah, well, Dyer's having flash. Just decided he didn't want to trade the summoners there, but Balls will eventually knock this turret down. So again, High shows up in the lane. Doesn't have a kill to show for it, but it was what earned his team that turret pickup. So two to two on that scoreboard now. Cloud9 holding a moderate gold lead. Yeah. Their average blades helping with that a little bit. Even with, let me just talk about the power of the Shivana speed clear, by the way. Even with the kill and assist on Santorin, he is still behind almost 800 gold behind High. So High still has the 800 lead over Santorin, even with those kill and assist bonuses going to him. It's interesting, too, because it's almost counteracted by the fact that Santorin had gotten earlier Sightstone instead of that cut list. So, like, he was getting vision control. Like, Santorin's impact was helping get the dragon down. And so these different advantages keep getting traded back and forth. The styles of junglers, actually. This game is, like, a good example of what those styles can accomplish. Gold first objective occasionally. Oh, that Shockwave! Goes Barely again. tags Bjergsen yet again! A lot of damage coming through. Bjergsen, once again, does not need his summoners to get away. He's sticking around. This is a bit risky because I could always go for the dive with the ulti. Yeah, he is fairly squishy at this point in the game. Remember that Shivana is still pretty squishy mm -hmm. early on in the early stages where she's building Devour into Bork. Um, so it has to be a bit careful about the earlier tower dives. Would definitely much rather fight out in the open. 
Cloud9 looking aggressive. Santorin forced to run. Hyke gets a third of his health in about half a second with his basic abilities here. He's Takes about take. the same in damage. Yeah, this blue buff actually wearing down on him pretty heavily. Dyrus is not going to go for the taunt just yet. Small parts of the buff trading back and forth. Incarnation shoves mid off the fact that Bjergsen has to leave. So nicely done. C9 slow burning these lanes down. Sitting two and a half thousand gold up here off a very solid choice being made. High right now. 24 stacks on Devour. Yeah. The 20 minute mark is actually kind of is a little bit slow for Shivana. She usually checks it really quickly. Yeah. That's because High has been visiting the lane so frequently. He's been trying to balance map pressure with just hard farming. Yeah, he's gonna do some job of it. And he'll probably transform his Sated around Blade of the Rune King completion time anyway, which is the big spike. You get the double active, uh, the double on hits of Blade as well as yeah, our Flame Breath. Then you really chunk down anybody due to the percent damages. I actually do wonder if Pi is going to stop at Cutlass though, because he has a Ruby Crystal in inventory right now. Like he might need Randuins or a Sight Stone or a Cowl or something. Um, Could. Uh, you know, flat health is always great to pick up on Shivana. Yeah, true. He could easily leave it up as a Ruby Crystal okay. and just try and uh, take advantage of the extra armor and magic resist he gets from Dragon Form. High has enough money for his Blade of the Rune King right now. 1,800 gold in inventory. I Same vote he choice. completes it. All right. You vote tank? I vote tank. Right. He went Rune King last time. Yep, he did it. All right. Same build as last time around. Kobe plus one. <laughs> His uh, Shoutcaster elo is higher than mine now. Sick. It probably was already, <laughs> but, you know. Well, we actually have... It's pretty funny, because you mentioned before you were talking about the different styles here. Yeah. And they're continuing on in those different styles. Play the Ruin King completed for high, but Santorin gets an Aegis of the Legion completion. Yeah. So that's going to help out with Incarnation because of how well Incarnation's done in the early game. The magic damage threat is very real. Shivana yeah. herself does a decent amount of magic damage. What? They walked into that barrel. I suppose they couldn't see it was in the brush. It's interesting, though, that Lemon is forced to go for the more tanky build, because that means he can't build man regen or ability power. He can't get uh, Mikhail's Crucible to His maybe stop love, the Lust Ardent Poison. Crusader. Yeah. Ardent I Sensor. Excuse me. Ardent, Ardent <laughs> Sensor, yeah. Um, <laughs> Too much Hearthstone. It's fine. Uh, yeah, or even like a Zeke's. Man, he's got a couple of auto attackers in the team. Shivana, Nar, trust we all like him. I like how the item got changed and now we're seeing like a whole bunch. Yeah. Well, I was actually thinking that we would see more early moves from TSM this game. Just because, you know, talking about the trying out different styles, they actually have the means to do that. They've got a Victor, you know, early game, uh, speed boost there from Sivir and global moves from Shen, but not a lot of moves after that single dive they did. And Cloud9 have been able to manufacture that early game lead yeah. that they've been able to utilize so effectively so far. Well, at least in the last couple of weeks after they've been able to sure. bring High back in and have their little mini resurgence. And TSM still sort of sitting back and playing cautiously here. This kind of feels good for TSM though. I mean, C9 kind of brought out from blue lanes, right? Demolition is Tristana, this Nar who's supposed to split push up against the Shen here. And granted, the Nar is getting a pretty big minion lead here, but we're not seeing many more turrets going down yet. They've stalled at three for quite a while here on C9's side. Dragon number three is now up. He's got the last one over great vision control right now, though C9 actually putting all their eggs in the top lane basket, saying if you go for Dragon, maybe we rush Baron, making it a bit risky. Maybe top lane turret goes down, who knows what. The thing is, Shivana can kill Dragon all by herself yes. really, really quickly, beca especially because of the Blade of the Rune King build and the Sated com being completed now. Yeah, it's it's minutes. a trivial objective for High to take. If you leave it unintended for a split second, he can sneak in there. All right, and they actually move their people on down. Teleport is up for Vault, leaving with the team. Flash Engage oh, comes in, Incarnation cleanses out, but down goes Sneaky right away. Incarnation puts the shield in high to the back lane. Great flash by Wild Turtle, so high goes down. An easy pickup for the squishy jungler here. A double kill for Bjergsen. Shockwave finds Lust Boy. A gnarlty kills back on the enemy support, but Balls has to now run. Shields are off, oh, but the gravity the field will catch him in. And C9 just on the way out. A two for one in favor of TSM.
Wow, ball's so tanky that it doesn't go down in that, but still, a huge victory for TSM right there. Lust Boy comes up huge. They 100% sneaky in the stun duration of the Flash Annie play. And High finds himself on the other side of the team fight there, went in on a solo mission yeah. with the Shivana and ended up giving two for one there for TSM. That'll be Dragon number two, and that's, that's what they needed to get right back in this one. Let's take a look at what would spur High to go in. Sneaky just gets 100% in there. Beautiful. He just thinks he can kill Turtle because they're chasing. Play. Yeah, he thought that the rest of TSM were chasing, and Turtle actually had to flash that. Yeah. If there was a Q to come back up, Dragon Form Q there from High would have been able to finish him off. Good flash there from Turtle to not go down. I think he took a Dyrus ulti too. I'm not sure. I didn't see it, but I would assume that was a target. And that might help him as well. Uh, if that was the case, then Hyde nearly would have one-shot that poor Sivir through her summoner heal and everything else. But yeah, as you say, it didn't work out. Unfortunate stuff there for C9. Good fight for Solomid. As Bjergsen gets his first kills of the game. Luden's Echo Rush, interesting choice. And mid lane outer finally goes down. Nicely sieged up by TSM, shoving C9 away. But it's still a 2,000 gold lead for Cloud9 here. They've just farmed a lot better in these lanes. You're now plus 70 in the yeah. top lane here. Balls is really... It's not having an impact in team fights yet, but he is growing so quickly in this game. Yeah, and I would expect TSM with Victor having also built Luden's Ecto. Like, the wave clear is insane for TSM. They've got Sivir and Victor. Double damage types. Two lanes they can control really easily. They have Shen as well. The side lane control, the minion waves should all be in TSM control. Yeah. Right now they're moving up on Sneaky, but true to his name, it looks like he's going to get out. High going for that solo mission. Dyrus wants to get to a wall. Well, he's going to be able to jump away, and High cannot follow with the ulti on cooldown. Shockwave, oh, Lost Boy oversteps his bounds, and a kill comes back. C9 feeling good about this one. Balls is tanky. He wants it on Bjergsen, gets stunned by the gravity field, does not land the boomerang. So High is still on the run, landing the skill shots. Well, that's Bjergsen. What did I say? It's okay. High's also running. He's coming up. He's trying to yeah. cut him off. He's trying to win the High's skill coming shots. through the jungle. <laughs> There's three mid laners in this game. It's really confusing. Everybody's running. <laughs> And yeah, Cloud movement nine. is life, freak. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone walks away. Everyone's fine. The marathon running around the map trying to get away. If there was an R chasing me, I would definitely run faster. So I understand that. All right, well, let's see if uh, we can make anything happen after this. Cloud Nine did get a couple kills there, but not much taken. TSM still look to have a bit better. Well, actually, the business control is pretty even now. A lot focused around the Baron area. And they're all, for C9, they are almost all defensive wards. And as you say, they are around Baron. Well, TSM can actually track a few of the jungle exits from C9. So uh, the Sight Stone, I think, helps Santorin so safe as he runs around the map. He can go for these deeper wards without dying. And High is out of item slots to bring wards in. Plus, he's got a Sweeper and not a Totem. So he can't provide that same type of vision that Centaurin can. Solomon have been doing a better job of finding picks in general. Void Staff done for Bjergsen. His burst damage is going to be very high. All right. I'm going to keep updating you on the gold difference between junglers uh, because of the style and because I uh, am a fan of Sated. I want to see yeah. more Sated using uh, competitive. But, yeah, it's 1900 right now. It's ridiculous advantage for high. Even with him having a death and zero kills, yeah. Centaurin has been participating with the kills for the team. The pressure that you get from Shivana, just the amount of damage she can do to neutral monsters and bullying people off the map. We see multiple times he catches Dyrus or he goes after Turtle. Mm -hmm. He can do enough damage, yes, he's not able to finalize the kills here because of the lack of mobility and hard CC. But he's punching positioning. And now he's going to go after Turtle. Oh, Sneaky Shadow brings is on way too much damage. Goodbye. Nothing could have done about that one except have better ward control here, and somehow C9 snuck into that side of the map. Lost Boy wants to get his jungle back, but Sneaky pushes out Santor, and Lost Boy is way too squishy to fight this at all. And High can just play Bodyguard with Dragon Form up. Now they've got open time on the turret. Tristana loves that. Gonna burn this down really quickly. What a great pick by C9. A single kill 
finding out Wild Twitter without some wards, and a turret goes down as a, as a result. With all the defense, even Incarnation got the push in mid. That one's down to two thirds. Talks about Dragon being a trivial task oh. here. A Baron is really easy for them to take as well. And Cloud9 head right over. Balls teleports in. There's the transformation as well. TSM knows uh, Z9 killed a ward on the way over, but a 4,000 health. Baron Nasher. Here's the boy. boy. Massive stun, but there's no follow up yet from Bjergsen. No ult, no E. In comes the push. Baron Nasher is slain. And the balls ult, he's going to find Bjergsen and Lust Boy. Oh but the burst comes back through. Still not enough incarnation. With Two kills in the shockwave, sneaky on the chase to keep the season's hopes alive. It's gonna be a big one. There's the fourth kill of the fight. Wild Turtle walks up the explosive charge. That's an ace. Cloud Nine firing. And with the Baron buff, they're gonna be able to get turrets after it as well. Some straight up mid lane. Sated Devourer Shivana crushing the Baron, crushing the champions. Incarnation peeking late enough into the split. They're gonna knock down, it looks like, an inhibitor for all this and a massive lead now for C9 here. Definitely one of the biggest improvements for Cloud9 in their recent victories has been the play of Incarnation. Finally finding it. It's Orianna. It's him finding champions that he knows and likes to play. This is his fourth Orianna game in the last five. Look at this thing just melt. Play of the Ruined King, Shivana Flame Breath active. Look at that laser, it hits it, balls only. It was such a great setup there from Lust Boy. Then Centaurin knocks all the pins down, but no damage there, because Turtle's not here. So this is a four on five. Even with Baron, High's able to stay on it. And once ball co Balls comes in for that Gnar ultimate, there's no hope for TSM. Sneaky runs past the gravity field, by the way. Just barely, too. Moving just ahead of it, keeping the red buff slow on. And look at the rocket jump and flash forward there to get the final kill on Turtle. You know what's funny, actually? That fight reminds me so much of C9 vs. TSM game one back in, in May. A beautiful engage. Bjergsen could have flash ulted, flash ult eat three people in that fight. Flash is up, ulti was up. And just like the dragon fight from back in May, he just like, I'm going to hide, I'm going to wait, I'm going to play more defensively, like he's playing at Kog'Maw, like he's playing in Azir. I think this push is going to work out for you. Uh, it's... I don't think they're going to catch anybody, because Hyde's just going straight mid. What's he going to push, though, except for the wave? And he they can't can really threaten Nexus turrets here. Try and force a four on five here well, real quick. Careful, Dyrus lands the flash taunt. No, doesn't hit a single person. The ulti from Santorin only disengages a few shock. with Ken is lost, boy. That's a kill, a rampage. Four in a row for Sneaky. In comes High. Double kill as Yerkson goes down. Shivana Tanky enough challenging Wild Turtle. Another kill for Sneaky, his third of the fight. Going for the Quadra, is he gonna get it? Nope, a kill for High. This could be the game winning push. Cloud9 are gonna get the tie for seventh place. The dream of heading to Worlds is alive. Great upset win. And just like we began the split, Cloud9 beats TSM 2-0 in the head-to-head -head matchup. Why couldn't they do that in the playoffs? <laughs> but C9 High, once he came into the team, 3-3, three and three, not the most auspicious record, but considering how badly the team was doing before then, certainly an improvement here with the squad. The shot calling so sharp with these guys. Now, High said, he said, I'm going to play the rest of the year with this team. If that means relegation, so be it. If that means worlds, then we're not going to switch me out. This is the squad that C9 are going to be running for the rest of the year. That might be a very long run for the rest of the year. That miracle. It, it I said with DDK be. and it was yeah. wrong, but that miracle split, that miracle season is still alive for Cloud9 right now. It definitely is. And even though TSM heading into playoffs it is not the note that they wanted to do it on, yeah.